So good afternoon, YouTube. Hope everyone's well. Um, running out of days to sign a player, and we desperately need a centre back. I think that's um, even more evident now after last night's game when Mustafi went down. And um, it don't look good for Mustafi. I haven't actually found out anything about what's happened. So if there is an update, can somebody let me know in the chat? I'd appreciate it. Um, but it didn't look good. He obviously clashed with Martinez. Uh, lack of communication between the two. And um, it didn't look good as Martinez clashed into him and, and clattered him to the floor. But um, obviously with Callum Chambers out injured for the rest of the season, Mustafi now injured, um, David Luiz hit and miss, Socrates hit and miss, and uh, Rob Holden doing what Rob Holden's done for a while now and just not look that great. We desperately need a centre-back. Now, we're obviously linked to two centre-backs at the moment. One of them flew in on Friday and um, said that he was happy he was signing for Arsenal. That's not materialised yet and he's back in Brazil. Um, that might still come through, that might still happen. But um, as it stands right now, there's so many different reports going around. One saying that that was always part of the deal and he was always going to fly back to Brazil. Um, so I'd ask the question, OK, cool. So if we sell a Bamiang, um, he flies off to PSG does a medical, agrees terms, and then comes back to Arsenal to train. Is that a normal thing to happen? Um, I don't think it is. So there's definitely something not quite right with that Pablo Marie deal right now. Whether there's something that's popped up on the medical and Arsenal have said, well, hang on a minute, this ain't right. I think that we should rejig the deal a little bit. I don't know. Um, maybe um, maybe we just chanced it. Maybe we tried our luck and thought, well, right, let's just get him over and stick it on him. I don't know. We'll see what happens. There's about 70 odd hours of this transfer window left. And um, that's up in the air at the moment. The other one is the guy you can see behind me, uh, Matt Vienko. And um, ironically, they've both got the same agent, which is kind of funny. Um, but Matt Vienko's three years younger. He's vastly more experienced. Um, he's, he plays for his country, plays for Ukraine. His contract ends in 2022. So he's got a little bit longer on his contract because Pablo Marie's deal ends on the 31st of December 2021. Um, so Matt Vienko's got two years left. Now, he would obviously cost more money, Matt Vienko, than buying Pablo Marie. So maybe that's why Arsenal were going down the route of Marie rather than Matt Vienko. Um, but there's there's an option to, to buy Matt Vienko after loaning him for four and a half million. We could then buy him in the summer for 22 million. Um, I think that would probably long term be the better deal. He's younger. Um, more experienced, and um, and I think that him alongside Saliba next season would be a lot better partnership than Saliba and Marie. That's just my opinion. Like I say, I don't really know a great deal about either of them, um, but I'm just looking in, in terms of um, experience, in terms of age, in terms of um, the fact that a 26-year-old who's a first-teamer for his, his um, club over in Brazil is only going for £7 million. That doesn't make, listen, just because it's only £7 million don't mean he ain't any good. But at the same time, this guy's got Champions League experience. He's been capped for his country 26 times over the last three and a half years. His debut was when he was 20, I think. And um, he, he plays in the Champions League. So for me, that's a lot better quality than it is playing week in, week out for the for the Brazilian league that Pablo Marie's playing in. But I haven't really seen either of them play. So... I'm only going off of um, off of the age and stuff like that, making my decision based on that. But if I was to if I was to go and pick one out of the two, I'd pick the guy behind me, um, just purely based on the fact he's 23 and he's experienced, more experienced. Um, but we've got 70 hours of this window left, 77 hours, something like that, and um, we need to um, we need to go and buy a centre back badly, whether it be a loan and then an option to buy, or whether it just be a straight deal. I don't know. I don't care. Just go and get a centre-back. Again, last night, I've been banging the drum about Nathan Aki for about two years now. He was superb last night. I know they obviously lost the game against us and we progressed to the next round, but he was superb. Absolutely quality, that geezer. And maybe that's somebody we should go and buy. Um, evening to everyone in the chat. Um, evening to everyone on Facebook as well. Um, I see Chig pop up a minute ago. We're linked. We're being linked with Lewis Dunk. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much because I was the first person to ever say go and get Lewis Dunk, by the way. And um, and everyone mocked me for that. Now everyone wants him. Kind of funny, that. Um, but yeah, I'll take him in a heartbeat as well. And and this is the thing. You know, we, 
we've left it until the last minute again. Is any Arsenal fan surprised at this? Because I ain't. You know, what have we been doing for the last three weeks or three and a half weeks for us to not have a deal in place for a centre-back? Even before um, Mustafi went off injured last night, we needed a centre-back. You know, we've loaned out Mavropanos. Callum Chambers is out. Um, the other three that we've got really ain't all that. And um, they're hit and miss. Like I said, David Luiz plays great for three games. And then he's a liability. You know, um, Socrates, great for two games. Then he's a liability. And it's like, can we just have a centre-back at this club that can play consistently well and do it over a sustained period of time rather than one week good, one week crap? So I'm hoping that we can get a centre-back in. Now, Arteta, after the game last night, did his post-match press conference, and he said that he don't want to speak about individual players, individual signings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, he did say we're in the market. He did say that it's not just defensively. Um, so does that mean Thomas Lamar's coming? Because we've been linked with him a lot. And um, again, I would take that deal for 30-odd million pounds. Um, that's a lot, lot cheaper than the apparent 92 million pound that we bid for him. Um, so I'd take that deal. Um, but at the same time, why is it lastminute.com with Arsenal? Why is it always last minute? You know, I'm looking at other clubs and, and they're doing the same. It's like, why? Like, the only one who hasn't um, left it till last minute is Liverpool. And their geezer's already played a game. He came on the other night um, against Man United, I think it was. Uh, Minamino. I just don't understand that, you know, we've had from the end of August, September, when the window shut, all the way through to now to go in and, and, and get deals done. Liverpool did that with the guy that they signed. So how comes teams like us, teams like Man United, um, that have got money, regardless of what you read, Arsenal have got a lot of money. And um, the, the way the wage bill is, we've got a lot of players off the wage bill. Mkhitaryan's on loan. Um, Mavropanos has now gone on loan. Um, so there's there's wages that have gone. I mean, Mickey's probably on, what, 200 grand a week? Um, let's say we're paying half of that. We've still got 100 grand a week off the wage bill. You know, and... Then we got rid of um, Cole Jenkinson. He left as well. El Nenny's gone out on loan. You know, and there's so many players that we've got off of the wage bill. I know we brought in a few players in the summer and that, but we have got money to go and buy players. Um, exactly. Ber Bergwijn's going into Tottenham as well, 30-odd million pounds. Ericsson's leaving. He's going to winter. And it's like, I just don't understand why the transfer window is always left till last minute. And then, this, this transfer window seems to have been left to last minute for most teams, but it's always lastminute.com with Arsenal. Why can't we just go and get a player announced straight away? I know Arteta came in um, just before the window opened, but, you know, surely, he's, um, surely he came into that interview process with targets of what we need and what he wanted, and he sat down with them and gone, right, this is what I require, this is what I think we need, this is this, this is that. And then that's down to Edu, Raul and Vinay to go out there and go, right, cool, let's go and get this and, and then go and do them deals. Apparently, Raul is connected so highly and, and so well thought of across global football. Um, where is he? Has anyone seen him recently? Because all I see is Edu. I ain't seeing him. Um, and this is uh, head of football. Where's our head of football today? What's he doing? You know, we see Edu coming back on a plane um, with um, Pablo Marie. Where's our head of football? You know, is he actually doing anything? What does he do? And and it's kind of worrying that, um, you know, we're we're three days or three and a half days now, three days and five hours away. So what? Yeah, 77 hours away from the transfer window closing. And we have only loaned players out. Um, a deal for a seven million pound player is in the balance on or off. I don't know. And um, that's likely to be about it. One player. Um, if you don't get anyone um then what <laughs> then what do we do um because we're light as it is and we need a couple of players in badly real badly and i'm just hoping that this club are working on deals right now because defensively um they're dropping like flies i mean when bellerin went down yesterday everyone's holding their breath again like oh my god oh my god you know bellerin could be out again but luckily he got back up um obviously mustafi went down then at one point socrates was down you know, Callum Chambers is gone for the season now. Um, and it's just, I'm just looking at it thinking all of this would have been saved if we hadn't have loaned Saliba back to St Etienne in the summer. What a stupid thing to do. Um, but they still have time to rectify it. They've still got 70 hours to do some deals. 
Um, there's going to be a mad panic rush at the end of this transfer window. Um, you'll catch it all live on this channel because I will do a deadline day stream. And um, I'll be doing the last few hours of the transfer window. Maybe do little updates during the day as well. Going to get a few people on. Um, so, yeah. Um, apparently, Shakhtar agreed the loan from Arsenal, um, says Abbuli. Abulai Mohammed. Sorry, I butchered your name, mate, but thank you for that. Um, well, this is the thing. His agent has come out and said that we've done a deal. We're in talks with him and this and that. Um, but then on the flip side of that, Pablo Marie saying, yeah, I'm happy to sign for Arsenal. Does anyone actually know? <laughs> Genuinely, does anyone actually know? I'm not too sure what's going on with the Marie deal. I don't know whether uh, Matt Vienko's agent's just touting for a bit more business in terms of linking to Arsenal. Maybe Man City will come back in for him because Man City wanted him at one point. Um, so I don't know. Look, at the end of the day, um, we need a centre back, and that has to be has to be done by the end of this transfer window. I also think we need a left winger. I've said this since the summer. Um, I know we've got Bukayo Saka, who's in top form at the minute. By the way, big him up. Um, he's he's making me eat my words a little bit. I've always liked him. I've always thought he's got sank about him. I didn't think he was um, he was ready. But he's more than ready. His goal last night was unbelievable. Um, and his all-round gameplay last night was sick as well. He's actually, I didn't notice, he's actually been involved in 11 goals this season in terms of scoring and assisting, um, which is pretty damn mental for, for an 18-year-old. And then you add that into Martinelli as well. Um, he's been involved in, what, 14 goals. So, yeah, it's pretty mad that two 18-year-olds are, are amongst our best players, if not our best players at the moment. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, let's read some of your comments. Um, who would you guys take? Who would you prefer? Would you prefer Marie or Matt Vienko? Let's, let's read, uh, read some of your comments out. Let's go back a few. Raul is working on his YouTube channel. <laughs> we are the richest club in London, according to the stats. Well, this is the thing, right? A lot of people are saying, oh, the owner's not releasing money. Bollocks. Yeah, the owner is paying Raul to release the money. Yeah, so it's on Raul right now. If Raul doesn't do what's required, then the owner should part him. It's as simple as that. Um, but this notion that the owner's sitting there going, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to release the funds. What a load of bollocks. Yeah, seriously. Um, the owner don't even know there's a transfer window. Come on. <laughs> he couldn't give a toss, could he? Um, Raul is behind you. Maybe I should have put Raul behind me. Um, I bet we do what we used to do. Look like we're interested in players and then bring no one in at all, says McManus. Evening to you, buddy. Um, well, that's a distinct possibility. Um, Tottenham signed Lo Celso permanently for 27 million today as well. Oh, wow. There you go. So they're going to do 50 odd million quid in this window, and we're divvering on seven mil at the minute. Um, going well, isn't it? Considering they've moved stadium recently, they're spending quite a bit of money, isn't they? Uh, they bought um, Ndombele, 60 million. They've just done that guy, plus the other one. So there's what? 110 million pounds they spent since the summer then. How can they do that? Uh, morning, Lee. Can I get a shout out? I finally turned 21 today. Yes, you do. You do, my friend. Happy birthday to Sergio Hernandez. Um, officially, you're allowed to drink in every state in America now, aren't you? Is that right? Um, 21. I think some states are 21, aren't they? So, yeah, happy birthday to you, man. And you've always supported my channel, man, always since day one as well. So um, thank you very much. I hope you have a wicked day, man. <coughs> Um, let's do a couple more of these. Minamito is just so Liverpool can reach the Asian market. Um, maybe, maybe. But listen, Liverpool are a massive draw in Asia anyway, mate. You know, they're a massive global football club already. Uh, very similar to us, very similar to Man United. Um, they're probably globally bigger than us. Um, in, and especially in that part of the globe. Um, they're definitely bigger over there than we are in, in the Asian market. So, um I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was the case. But even so, he still played the other day. He came on against Man United. So they're obviously going to use him, aren't they? How can the board possibly... Let me start that again. How can the board possibly believe we only need £7 million defender? Realistically, we need seven good players to fix the shambles of a club. And there's my light dead. Um, I swear, this light, I'm going to buy another one because this one is winding me up. I charge it all the time, man. It just, bang, blows. So I've gone fuzzy again. <laughs> my hands. <laughs> But there we go. Um, well, yeah, listen, I agree with that, mate. I think we need to do more than £7 million in this transfer window. And um, it's kind of worrying that we're 70-odd hours away from this window ending and we've spent a grand total of zero. 
and we've got um, Mavropanos on loan. We've got um, Oli Inc has gone on loan to Northampton. Um, where did um, where did Mavropanos go? Nuremberg. Um, then we've got um, Smith Rowe at Huddersfield. And then we've got John Jules at Lincoln. Add their wages up. We've probably saved the best part of 60 grand a week. Probably more. Uh, probably 70 grand a week. Sack the light. Um, I, need to, I need to buy a better light, man. Because this one, it's a good light. Um, I like it. But it just dies way too quickly. So, yeah. Um, it's my 16th birthday today, says Seb. Happy birthday to you, Seb, as well. Super Fuzzy Lee. Super Fuzzy Lee's the best Lee. Uh, maybe Drunk Lee's the best Lee. <laughs> I don't know. Um, your light is like our board, dead. <laughs> nice one, Hugh. Uh, if the club sold a Bamiang, how much of that money would they use for new players? Probably none, says David. Um, well, this is the thing, right? This is what I don't get. Yeah, I don't get how anybody at that football club, whether it be the owner, whether it be the head of football, um, whether it be Edu, whether it be Vinay, Arteta, or anybody else in a position of power at that football club, can sit there all January and think, yeah, we're all right. We're tenth. We're tenth for a reason as well, because we ain't good. You know, and we ain't good. That is the, the biggest issue here. We are not good. Yes, we've looked a lot better since Arteta's come in. But again, the results haven't been any different um, in terms of league. Yeah, cup competitions. Yeah, we've won two out of two in the cup, which is great because we're, we're one step away from a quarter final now, two steps away from a semi and three steps away from getting to the final. So I'd love us to get to the final. That'd be amazing. But um, league position... We're in big trouble because we, we could seriously not qualify for European competition next season, whether that be um, Europa League or whether that be Champions well, It's definitely not going to be Champions League. But um, if we don't get in Europa League, yeah, that means that we only have uh, one game a week, which means they can train more and they can work on different stuff without going uh, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, for example. Um, but at the same time, I think we need to do a lot more than waiting until the last three days of the window to get a player in. and. Um, there we go. I can't listen to you anymore. You're so negative. Well, bye then. Um, why can't you be positive? <laughs> I am being positive, mate. I'm saying we need to sign some players. What part of this are you lot missing? Yeah, if you don't like it, bye-bye. Go, go and get into a nice positive channel. Maybe set your own one up. <laughs> Granny Voice Lee is the best Lee. Exactly. Listen, at the end of the day, go and watch my watch along from last night and tell me I ain't positive. Do you know what I'm saying? People listen to one minute of, of a stream and go, you're negative. Well, go away then, man. Go and go and live in your bubble of delusion. Yeah, simple, isn't it? <laughs> my girlfriend wants your number. <laughs> uh, number one. <laughs> number one, baby. You are not lit today. No, my light died a minute ago. So apologies. It died about three, four minutes ago. Um... <laughs> What do you have to say about Cedric Suarez, Suarez from Southampton? Not a bad player. Uh, Southampton have got some very good players, actually. They've got some all right players down there. Um, and listen, I'm surprised they didn't sack their manager when they got battered 9-0. Um, but they've turned it around since then. They've done very well since then. So um, sometimes the knee-jerk reaction of sacking a manager isn't always necessarily the one. Um, but yeah. Uh, Abigail Afori says, new subscriber. Thank you. You've just replaced the one who said I was negative that left. <laughs> so thank you to you, Abigail. Uh, my lighting is dead. So apologies for that. It did die a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Nine o'clock stream. I'll have it fully charged up and we'll, we'll have proper lighting rather than me looking fuzzy again. Um, <laughs> is it true that we're in for him? I'm not too sure, uh, Gurpri. I don't know, mate. I haven't checked any transfer news today other than this and, and the Pablo Marie one. Um, we have fallen so far that I get excited when we're linked to a player I've never heard of. Uh, <laughs> um, well, yeah, this is true, mate. Um, it just gives me hope that we might actually sign a player. Well, this is the thing, right? People sit there and they've got this conspiracy theory that I'm just negative, negatively, negatively. He's always negative. This channel started on the 20... No, it didn't. It started in November 2018. Yeah, end of November 2008. I think it was the 21st of November. So November 21st is a year later, 19, um, December, January. 14 months ago, I started this channel. 
14 months ago, Unai Emery was the manager of this football club. 14 months ago, I was the most positive Arsenal fan about Unai Emery you would ever find. All the way up until Crystal Palace at home this season, to the point where people that are telling me I'm negative were screaming for him to get sacked after three months. Yeah, and after six months and eight months and nine months and 12 months. So I find it hilarious that people go, you just speak negative bullshit all the time. Uh, well, I don't. Go and check out the, about the 600 videos that I've done when Emery was manager. Um, the fact is, we're crap. If people want to sit there and, and dress it up, sit there and dress it up if it makes you feel better. Still ain't going to change where we are in the table, though, is it? We're 10th. <laughs> I swear to God, some of you lot crack me up. Some of your comments are hilarious. Uh, Arsenal wants to borrow some money to loan that Marie. Uh, evening to you, Count Roskilla. I hope you're good. I hope your little vacation's going well, man. I'll see you DM today, watching me on your on your Mac with a nice little Heineken. Um, so thank you for that, mate. Uh, what about Jonathan Tar from Bayer Leverkusen? Says Abishek Shenj. Um, yeah, I'll take that. I think he's a good player. Can we go and get a deal done for this player, though? Can we go and get a deal done for that one? That one, even. I do that all the time. It's always back to front. I should know my back to fronts now because I have to look the opposite way when I cross a road in Spain. Um, but yeah, why the, listen, there, there's players out there that we need to go and buy. Uh, Blind Gunnar, sorry, I missed your donation earlier, my friend. Um, I do apologise for that. Would you prioritise Europa League or top four? Um, what, this season? Europa League or top four? We ain't getting top four. Um, do I think we can win the Europa League? Well, we're in it, so we've got a chance. Um, there's some good teams in it. Inter are in there. Um, but then Inter are pushing on for a title at the minute. Um, they're only three points behind Juventus. So will they prioritise trying to get that title in the bag? They're signing Ericsson now as well. So that's going to give them a little kick on. Um, so there's some hard teams in there. Ajax, uh, Salzburg. Not easy to win that Europa League. For me, just try and win the next game. Yeah, let's not look too far forward in terms of um, trying to prioritise anything. Just prioritise the next game, man. Um, anybody who's not subscribed to Daniel as well, um, he appears on AFTV. Um, he's blind, obviously, hence the blind Guna. Um, go and check his channel out. He's doing regular um, videos on his channel now. So go and check him out and subscribe to him and show him some love. Um, who is Inter's manager? Is it Conte? I think it is Conte, isn't it? Wouldn't it be funny if Alexi Sanchez won a title <laughs> on loan from Man United? Um, ain't Lukaku at Inter as well? That'd be kind of ironic that they, they got rid of them two and they go and win a title, which would be Inter's first title since when when Jose was there. Is that right? Uh, Maria Matvienko says, Luca, you pick, mate. I'd pick Matvienko. Uh, big up everyone on Facebook. Um, do share the video. Apologies to anybody who's joined the stream late. My light died, so I'm fuzzy Lee again. Um, it was nice and crisp before that, but it's not anymore. Ashley, Ashley, I can't even speak. Ashley, 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 Ashley Young um, actually uh, set a goal up on his debut the other night, uh, Agent Ghost. So yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of a retirement home for Man United players, isn't it? <laughs> or ex Man United players, but they're doing all right. They're smashing it at the minute, man. Three points behind Juve. Juve are wobbling. They lost against Napoli at the weekend. Um, so yeah. Do you like the idea of a Premier League winter break? Nope, I don't. I think it's absolute bollocks. It's bollocks. You've only got to have a look, right? Uh, um, the fact that the Championship, for example, they play 46 games. You know, people can say it's not as intense and it's this and that. Well, listen, you know you're in a game when you're playing against a Championship team every week. Yeah, and 10 teams can win that title every year. Let's be real. Um, so it's not... It's not an easy league, the championship. I'd say that's more competitive than any league in the world. They play 46 games plus cup games, right? So if you add up how many games them teams are playing of a season, it's about 50 to 55 games, maybe 60 if a team gets a good cup run, right? So what's the difference in playing that many games for them and then, you know, us having 38 league games, um, I don't know, say six in the cups or eight in the cups, and then the Europa League. I don't really get it. It's still about 55 games a season, 60 games a season. Um, I, I don't. I, I think it's a load of bollocks, mate, if I'm honest. You know, and these, these players are paid an awful lot of money. They're extremely fit people. 
they they keep they they eat well they sleep well they train well um in the gym on on the training ground etc cetera, etc cetera. why can't they play the next couple of weeks i don't get it i genuinely don't get it um so there we go what about ben gibson from burnley um i'll be straight up i don't even know who he is <laughs> I have no idea who he is. Oh, dear. You watch, he'll score the winner at the weekend. Uh, evening to my pal, that number. Go and subscribe to his FIFA YouTube channel for me. Um, so anybody who likes FIFA, um, click on that number. He's just up there. And um, and go and check that out. And um, I'm going to wrap this stream up um, in a minute. But go and check his channel out. He's over 500 subs now. So well done to him. And um, push him up to 1,000. He's um he's grafted his ass off on that channel and the views and the and the subs are so um not worthy or not worth what the work rate is that he's put in. Um so yeah, listen, apologies that the light died and I'm all fuzzy again. Nine o'clock, I'll be back with proper lighting and um it will be a lot, lot crisper. Hopefully by then we would have signed a player. Um but who knows? Who knows? We've got 70 odd hours to sign a player. We've signed no one at the moment. And um, for some reason, everyone seems to be so positive about assigning no one that I'm so negative, apparently. <laughs> yeah, good one. Anyway, on that note, um, I'll leave you all in peace. Laters, peeps.